Hi guys, Luke here from 3D Tutor, and in this tutorial I will show you how to set up an interactable door from scratch with proper collision, custom pivot points, animation, bindable keys and text overlay. All in one type of a tutorial for a nice door within Unreal Engine 5 project. Alright, so in order to start it off we're going to first of all get ourselves a simple door. I'm going to quickly go on to add pixel bridge content to find myself a nice door to use. I'm going to search for door and I I think the one I'm going to make use out of is going to be this one over here. It's a really nice type of setup. We essentially need to get ourselves a door that's able to be looking quite nice from all the angles. So that's going to be perfect for us. I'm going to go ahead and add it to the project. And we got ourselves a folder with a door inside of it. And yeah, we can make use out of any door that we want. But essentially what we need to do is, first of all, make sure that the origin point is set up to be at the corner of our door. And as you can see over here, it's already set up quite nicely. But in case you don't have that, you wouldn't be able to rotate this door like so sideways. So we got to make sure that we have that nicely set up. And we can do that actually within Unreal Engine 5 itself. If we were to go on to edit, plugins mode and we were to search for modeling like so we got ourselves modeling tool editor mode which if we were to enable it we'd need to restart our engine but after which we'd be able to make use out of this modeling tab over here which if we were to enable it we can go down all the way until we get to the transform tool and Within this transform section, we got ourselves edit mesh pivots. Let's go ahead and select it. It'll give you a nice gizmo to readjust and control where we want the gizmo to be. So just make sure that we are setting it up within the angle that we'd like for how we want the door to be rotated. Then we're going to hit accept. And yeah, we'll be able to rotate ourselves the door nicely. So now we can go back on to the selection mode like so. And yeah, as the door, it firstly needs to be made sure that it doesn't allow the player to go through. So at first, if we were to make use out of the quicksel door, it's going to just let us to walk through it. So let's make sure that we have a nice type of a collision set up first. And yeah, for us to do that, we're going to go on to the static mesh itself. We're going to double click on it and we're going to go on to the collision tab. I'm going to only just add a simple box collision. So this one is going to be sufficient. Let's go ahead and click on it. It'll give us a nice type of a base for a simple collider like so. We can now go ahead and close this down. And as you can see, if we were to try to go through the door, it's not going to let us. So that's exactly what we want. We can now go ahead and start setting ourselves up with the door to be interactable so the player can pass through whenever it's being open. So yeah, for us to do that, we're going to go back onto our content folder. We're going to, first of all, right click and add ourselves up with an input controller. In the previous versions of Unreal Engine, we'd be able to go on to the project settings. We'd be able to just simply add input and we'd set ourselves up over here but as you can see it's uh, a bit outdated at this point so it's bad it's best to actually set ourselves up with our own custom controller so yeah we're going to do just that we're going to close this down and we're going to create ourselves an input like so input action i'm just going to search for it i'm going to add this and i'm going to call this ia underscore action key like so and if we were to click on it, it's nothing fancy. It's just a simple action key that's going to allow us to set ourselves up with the value type, which by default is going to be set up as Boolean type. And if we were to use controller, for example, or something of the sort, uh, we could change this to be a uh, different types. But yeah, default simple click, uh, click of a key is going to be a simple digital Boolean. And now we're going to make sure that we set it up within a controller itself. And yeah, for us to do that, we're going to create yet another one. We're going to right click, search for input. Like so, we're going to add input mapping context. And this is going to be essentially the same type of a controller that we just saw within the project's uh, settings. But it's going to be just a bit better, which we're going to access into. But before doing that, I'm just wanted to rename it. So I'm going to call it IMC underscore action controller like so going to double click on it and now we can see that we have the same mappings as we had within the project settings if you're familiar with it you'll be able to make use out of it nicely so we can and if you're not just follow along this video and you'll be fine and yeah we're going to click on a plus symbol over here which will give us this sort of a setup if you're not seeing all of these just make sure to click on these arrows over here just to 
have them opened up. I usually have them opened up like so. And yeah, first things first, we need to make sure we link the action to this key and we'll be able to do that by adding ourselves this to action key like so. And the next step is that we need to specify which key click is going to uh, give us this type of uh, action. And yeah, we can make use out of this box over here or alternatively, we can just click on this uh, little button over here and then just bind any key by clicking on it like so. So I just click E and that'll rebind the button to be E. And afterwards, I'm going to go ahead and close this down. And to actually make use out of it, we're going to go on to the third person template. We're going to go on to the blueprints and blueprint character. So within this type of a blueprint, if we were to go on to our event graph, we can see that at the very top, we have add input mapping. Uh, it already has add mapping context to it. Uh, already has its own control setup, but we can add on top of it by simply just uh, grabbing ourselves the same notes. I'm going to grab this one and hit control C, control V on the side. I'm going to reattach the same values as we had like so to the target and to the event being executed and I'm simply going to change the mapping context to be the action controller like so I needed to make sure that this is attached to the original mapping context and then the end part is attached to the new mapping context I'm going to go ahead and compile it and exit this out of the way and this works nicely within the third person it also would be the same type of setup within a first person as well or alternatively you can change that up to be within your own custom controller and yeah, once we're done with that, we can now finally go ahead and create this uh, blueprint for the door. We're going to go ahead and select the door and the easiest way to do that would be to just add a, a conversion of a blueprint class. Let's go ahead and convert this to a blueprint. We're going to harvest all of its components and we're going to select the path that we want. I'm just going to go ahead and add it to a simple content folder like so at the very top. The name can be the same. I'm going to go ahead and keep it. I'm going to go ahead and uh, hit select like so. And there we go. We got ourselves a, our own blueprint, which by default doesn't do anything. So we'll need to set ourselves up with a door to be uh, properly set up within the game. We're going to go on to event graph for that. And first things first, we need to make sure that we set ourselves up with an animation for this type of setup. So we're going to make sure that we, whenever we execute the interact key, we're going to start opening the door. So for that, we're going to right click. We're going to search for action key. Uh, action key. There you go. Let's go ahead and add action event. Which is going to give us this sort of an event node. And all we need is going to be started type of an executable. So whenever we click on a button, it's going to do something. And if you want to, for example, whenever we release it, it would be canceled by the way. But yeah, we're only going to be using this one right now. We're going to drag from this to uh, create an, a timeline. Let's go ahead and do that. Add a new timeline like so. We can just leave the name as is. And we're going to double click on it to create ourselves a float type of a graph. We're going to click on add track add float track like so we're going to zoom out and see that it's actually started off by zero zero values and goes all the way to a value of five for the time it's going to be a little bit too long in regards to the door being opened up and closing down so i'm going to change this to something more reasonable like a value of two seconds like so and then we're going to create ourselves two key points we're going to right click we're going to add a key point over here and right click add a new key point over here we're going to now change the values for them and for us today we're going to select a key point we're going to go to the top uh, section for the properties tab over here and change the time to be at zero then the default value for the first key should be kept as zero and the second key should be go all the way to the end which is going to be a value of two the value for this is going to be a value of one so whenever this is being executed it's going to be going over two seconds in regards to going from zero to one we're also going to select both the keys and we're going to right click and add uh, automatic interpolation which will as you can see ease off the graph so it won't give us uh, just a jagged type of emotion it'll give us a more organic type of a flow from it and yeah, once we're done with that, we can go ahead and close down this tab. We can go back on to our node system. And we'll need to make sure that whenever we hit play, it opens up a door. But we also need to make sure that we also close down the door. 
So for that, we're going to make use out of a flip-flop type of a node, like a simple switch. It's going to be attached to this. And the first time we click, it's going to play. Then the second, second time we click on a door, we're going to uh, reverse the animation and close this down. And that's all we need to do for that. And we are now going to make use out of this value to make sure that the door is being opened up and closed. I'm going to go on to the viewport itself, I'm going to select the door. So this is going to be the door component. I'm going to go back onto the mesh graph and just drag this out from the component uh, type of a bar, which we're now going to drag out a node and search for set relative rotation. We need to make sure we rotate this door and yeah, we're going to make sure that we check which type of a gizmo uh, rotation we need to rotate it around. We're going to go back onto the viewport. I'm going to select the door, hit E and see that it is actually being uh, affecting a Z value like so. We can see it at the top right hand section within a details tab being affected like so. I'm going to keep it as a default rotation and now go back onto the event graph. And yeah, we're going to only switch up the Z value. So for that, we're going to need to split this up. So we're going to right click. We're going to split the structure pin and we're going to make use out of a Z rotation. So for that, we're going to not only add a timeline type of a setup, we're also going to get ourselves our own custom value that we're able to switch up in regards to how much we want the door to open. So we're, we're going to quickly just uh, add a new variable within the top, bottom left hand corner. We're going to call this door angle like so. We're going to change this from boolean to a float value, which will allow us to give it a nice integer to use. And we're going to also make sure we enable this eye over here so we can also change that out within our editor itself for the blueprint. Then we're going to click and drag and drop this onto the blueprint itself, get a door angle, and we're going to attach this with a timeline. So we're going to need to right click, we're going to search for multiplier, like so, multiply, node, we're going to attach both uh, the door angle and attach the timeline, which is going to be, by the way, new track, like so. And then we're going to attach this final result onto the new rotation of yaw. Let's not forget to attach the relative rotation from the timeline. So let's go ahead and do that. So after it's being updated, we're going to constantly be rotating this entire setup like so. So yeah, we got ourselves a setup for our animation, but it's still not going to be playing. And the reason being is that we need to enable ourselves the input of this uh, key. And yeah, for us to enable that, we're actually going to make use out of it in regards to making sure that the door doesn't get automatically opened up uh, anywhere on the map so we just got to make sure that we create ourselves a certain uh, box that will allow us to enter it and then we are able to make use out of the action key whenever we enter so yeah we're going to go back onto the viewport we're going to click add we're going to search for collision so collision box we're going to make sure we make use out of it and i'm going to end, uh, add this up i'm going to make sure that this is being positioned properly I'm going to extend it outside of the door so the player would be able to enter this type of a, a box like so. It's not going to be seen within the game itself. So we got to just make sure that it's positioned nicely to be uh, for the player to enter close to it, essentially. And yeah, once we're done with that, we can now go back to the event graph. We now need to make sure that we have some events coming out of this collision box. We're going to select the box itself. We're going to scroll all the way down until we get the events tab. And we're going to select on component begin overlap and on component end overlap. We're going to click on the first one. Then we're going to make sure that we select the box itself again, the box collision. We're going to select the second one and now we can make use out of them to work on in regards to enabling the inputs. So yeah, for us to do that, we're going to just get ourselves the execution for when the player enters this box like so. And we're going to search for third person character. So we can, we're telling uh, what uh, what is being entered, what we're looking for within this collision. We're going to make sure that our actor is selected as the object as this third person character. Then we're going to make sure we execute enable input. Enable input like so. And for the player controller, we need to get ourselves a player controller. So let's search for player controller controller there you go get player controller let's go ahead and enable this 
uh, attach this to the player controller like so. So now whenever we enter the box, uh, we get ourselves with enabled event for this action key, which is pretty good. We're going to uh, drag this downwards a little bit in regards to when we exit the overall type of setup. And we're going to grab all of these, hit Control C, Control V, and attach this to the third person character. And we also need to make sure that we disable the input. So we're going to change this up of a node. We're going to delete this, right click, and we're going to uh, search for disable input, like so. We're going to reattach it in the same way as we had previously. So, and now if we were to hit compile, we're actually going to need to make sure that this is also attached like so. We're going to now hit compile and get ourselves a green tick. We're going to close this down real quick to check how it looks. I'm also going to select the blueprint itself. I'm going to go all the way down and because we had the eye opened up, we're going to get ourselves a door angle uh, option in here within the detail tab for the blueprint. And now we can change this to be 90 degrees like so. And yeah, once we hit compile, we're going to close this down and see if it works. I'm going to go ahead and click E and see how this looks like. And there we go. We got ourselves a nice door that we're able to open and close. One more thing that we should probably consider is in regards to the door looking like it's more of an interactable object. Otherwise, when we go close to the door, it's not going to look like we can interact with the door at all unless we know about it. So for us to make sure we have a bit more of that, we're going to go back on to the edit blueprint like so. We're going to go ahead and add a simple text at the very front of the door. I'm going to go on to the viewport and I'm going to go ahead and add it up. I think that's going to be the front of it. I'm actually just going to go and add a simple text. I'm going to search for a text, a text renderer. We're going to make sure we are setting up the text at the front of the door. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to just grab it, rotate it around and set it up at the very front. And to, text, uh, to change the text itself, we're going to click on a text box over here with the text render selected. We're going to go on to the details tab and change this up to be press E to interact. Something like that. And I'm also going to make this text way smaller like so. So it'll be right at the front of the door. And one more thing to consider is when we select the door, it's going to be rotating, but it's not going to be attached. So just make sure that this text is just simply attached to the static mesh itself. And now when we rotate the door, it should be moving on the door itself. So there you go. I'm attaching it like so. Making sure it rotates with the door itself. And yeah, we of course need to make sure that whenever we are further away, it's not going to be just visible like so. So for that, I'm actually going to go into the visibility for the text. I'm going to go ahead and select the text itself, search for visible, visible like so. And to start off, we're going to click on visible in scene capture only, which will allow us to hide the text by default. Then we're going to go onto the event graph. We're going to uh, grab the text renderer onto the blueprint next to the entrance of the box. We're going to grab from the text renderer. We're going to search for visible. We're going to get ourselves set visible in scene capture only. And this value is going to be ticked off, which is going to be executed whenever we enter the box itself. Then we, of course, we need to disable it whenever we uh, exit the box. So let's go ahead and grab both of these. Hit Control C, Control V, and we're going to uh, execute this with the value being uh, ticked on. Now that we've done it like so, we're going to go ahead and compile this entire thing. We're going to go ahead and close this down, and there we go. We got ourselves a nice setup for the door that shows that we can actually interact with it. So press E to interact. We can interact with it. And we can close the door down as well. And yeah, that's going to be it in regards to the setup of an interactable door within Unreal Engine 5. I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to like and subscribe to the channel to see more content. We have a lot of interesting type of resources for Unreal Engine 5. We also create 3D modeling tutorials for Blender as well. So make sure to go ahead and check them out. And yeah, thank you so much for watching and happy modeling everyone.